Verse 1, So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not only on earthly things. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. Verse 5. By the way, I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now, put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. In Christ, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, we are now in verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is God's word. Please be seated. Okay. We're taking a break from our studies in the book of 1 John. Kagmalumpat kita de, masay luta anay din sa Colossians. Because this is post-Easter season. Last week, last Sunday, we heard a message that is related to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? And this afternoon, again, this will be a message that is also related to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we will try to answer a very important question. That question is this. Nga ah, kadamo sang mga Kristuhanon, nga daw wala nagkakabuhi bilang Kristuhanon. Nga nagaklaiman kita, nga bago na we are new creation, new creatures in Christ, pero nga daw hindi makitaan sa aton kabuhi. Diin ang holiness. Diin ang ginatawag nga new life. Nga daw hindi visible sa aton pagkabuhi. That is the question we would like to answer through the study of this passage. And if you look at the passage, you will find out that as Christians, we ought to do a number of things. Isummarize ko na lang ka lawig, kagalaba sang ining passage, no? 17 verses. But basically, you can summarize the passage in three divisions, three points. Ang ining passage is teaching us, number one, to prior- prioritize what is heavenly, seek the things that are above. Number two, this passage is teaching us to put to death what is earthly. Ang mga kasalanan, kagmalain, nabutang sa kabuhi mo, pamatyon mo na. And number three, this passage is teaching us to put on what is lovely. Daw bayo, bala nga suksukon mo, bago ka na nga tinuga, bago ka, bago ka na nga tao kay Kristo, you put on what is fitting as a Christian. Love, compassion, forgiveness, and all those things nga ginamention dere sa verse 12 sa Colossians chapter 3. Those are the things which should be seen in the life of a Christian. Pero ang pamangkot, nga daw hindi makitaan. Na. And I suggest to you, based on this passage, the answer is maybe because 
we do not really understand or maybe we have forgotten or maybe we do not apply the truth that not only is Christ risen from the dead, we are risen with Him. Medyo madalong na siya nga doktrina. We all know, of course, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He physically resurrected. That is what the resurrection is. It is not a myth. It is not symbolical. It's really something that happened in time and space. It is a historical event. But the Bible not only teaches that Jesus Christ historically rose from the dead, the Bible also teaches that if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, nagtuo ka sa iya, ikaw mismo, kita nga nagtuo sa iya, nabanhaw ka upod sa iya right now. And that is very interesting. Because many of us understand the resurrection of believers and of God's people as something that will happen in the future when He comes back, right? But the Bible is teaching us, there is a verse 1, if you look at your Bibles, even right now, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, kag born again ka na, even right now, you are already risen with Christ. And what I'm trying to teach you from the Bible is, if you really understand that truth in your heart of hearts, that you are risen with Christ, it will affect the way you behave, and the way you live your life. Kung naintindihan mo gudya what it means to be risen with Christ. So let me just repeat one more time. Ang key point sa aton mensahe, not only is Christ risen from the dead, if you put your faith in Him, you are risen together with Him. We are resurrected right now. That is a wonderful and staggering and mysterious truth. The Bible says, so if you have been raised with Christ. Amo na subong ang status sang tumuluo. Amo na siya ang spiritual condition of a believer. He is, he is dead to sin and he is risen with Christ. Okay. Ang takeaway, eh, kundi usually sa sermon, ginahatag ang takeaway sa punta sa wali. Subong pa lang sa beginning, ihatag ko na sa inyo ang takeaway. The takeaway is this. Christ's physical resurrection entails the believer's spiritual resurrection. Let me repeat. Christ's, apostrophe S, physical resurrection entails the believer's spiritual resurrection. Okay, let's go to related verses. Because you know, in order to understand, ako, ako gapati ko sa principle of scripture interpreting scripture. If you want to know what scripture means, you let scripture interpret itself. Go to the related verses. For example, kundi ang atong focus sa bunga hapon in Colossians 3.1, if you have been raised with Christ, kagto ka bala sa Ephesians 2 verse 1, and verses 4 to 6 of Ephesians chapter 2, and then you will read here the Scripture's own interpretation or commentary of what it means to be raised with Christ. Verse 1, Ephesians 2, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Of course, he has to say this, because before you can be resurrected, you must first be dead first. Di bala? Common sense ba lang na? Logic. How can a person be resurrected if in the first place, he is not dead? So, dapat napatay siya, Anay. Lumpat ka subong sa verse 4. Or, or maybe let's just read also verses 2 and the other verses. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. What does this mean, to be dead in your trespasses and sins? In which you previously walk according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, Butslingon ang ginasunod mo ya ang kabubuton ni Satanas hindi ang kabubuton sang Dios the spirit now working in the disobedient butslingon to be dead in your sins means that you are living in sin you are disobedient to God we too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires ang mga lust ang mga greed ang mga covetousness amo niya ang nagahari sa atong tagapisuon when we were dead in sin okay what else does it say? 
carrying on the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were, we were by nature children of wrath, under wrath, as the others were also. In other words, we are condemned. We are under God's wrath because we are sinners, we live in sin, and we are enemies of God. We are at enmity with Him. Okay. That is what it means to be dead in sin. You are following, of course, no? Gina explain ko lang very rig- rigorously ko ano ang meaning sa mga words of God. Now we go to resurrection. In verse 4, here is what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 says. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love that He had for us, made us alive with Christ. There it is, resurrection. Even though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. He also raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. Both silingon sa simple nga sugilanon, to be spiritually resurrected means ginbaton mo si Kristo Jesus bilang manluwas mo, ginbuhi ang spiritu mo, sang ginuo, and you are now saved. In other words, to be risen with Christ and to be saved are practically synonymous. So kung hindi ka luwas, hindi ka risen with Christ. You are dead in your sins. Pero, kung luwas ka, kay gin baton mo si Kristo, na born again ka, you are risen with Christ. That's it. Practical nga definition sang risen with Christ. Let's go to another verse. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. What does it say? The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because of His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay? There it is again. To be risen with Christ simply means that you are born again. You have a new life. This new life is yours through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, amoy na ang main truth na gusto ko itudlo kag impart sa inyo sa buong hapon. The physical resurrection of Jesus Christ means or entails the spiritual resurrection of the Christian. If you are saved, you are risen with Christ. And that will affect the way you live. Ang problema naton is that Either wala gid na to na what it means to be risen with Christ or we forget. Kay ang isa ka balatian sang Kristohanon, amnesia kag Alzheimer's. We tend to forget so we always need to be reminded. So in order to really appreciate in a way that will change our lives and our conduct, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and our being risen with him you have to take note of two things. Amo ini ang main points. Duha lang sang aton nga mensahe. Number one, the significance of our baptism. By the way, ginlain kong akon outline nga ginatag. So you can, you can, I, I changed my sermon the last uh, minute, no? So you can disregard what is there. We will just, I will just ask you to please listen carefully. Okay, number one, the significance of our baptism, and number two, the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, it just occurred to me, mas importante siguro nga ma-share ko lang ang kamatuuran sa inyo instead of being meticulous bala sa pag-explain gid sang word for word, especially if it is very hot, kainit, subong nga hapon, it will be an act of torture if I were to preach in a very long-winded manner, ang hope ko, 20 to 30 minutes, tapos na ta. So, ipang summarize ko na lang. O, summarize ko na lang, ha? instead of, anyway, ara man ang passage kagina, nabasa nyo. Number one, the significance of baptism. Basi makibot ka mo, anong labot sang baptism, diri sa aton man set mensahe, kay ang ginatunan man ato niyang resurrection of Jesus Christ and our reset, we being risen with Him. Actually, ang definition sa reason with Christ, makitaan mo sa chapter 2 sa Colossians verses 11 to 13. As I said kagina, I believe in interpreting scripture by scripture. Hindi siya siling yang kung ano lang yang idea magsulod sa mind ko, i-impose ko on scripture. No. 
Scripture interprets Scripture. Di sa Colossians 2 verses 11 to 13, ginakumparar ni Paul ang resurrection, our resurrection with Christ to baptism. Nga, nadumduman nyo sang nabaptize ka mo? I, I assume na tanan kita din nabaptize, no? Kung nagtuo kay Kristo kay Kristo Isos, ano ang natabo sang nabaptize kita? Gin-immerse kita, we were buried, we were dead, then we rose again to new life. Buot si Lingon ang significance sang baptism amuni. You live the old life, you live the new life. You live L-E-A-V-E, the old life, ginbayaan mo na na, kag you live the new life. In other words, baptism is a symbol of the new life in Christ. The meaning of baptism is fulfilled in our resurrection with Christ Jesus spiritually. Ang punto ko di amune, practical nga point. We take our baptism for granted. Di ba? Nalimta na ganin na kung saan ito natabok. Di ba? We think it is just a ritual. Kay, we, know that, we know that it is just a symbol. It does, not, it does not save us. What saves us is our faith in Jesus Christ. But it does not mean that it's not important. Ang baptism, marka na siya, nga iya ka na sa ginoo. Nga ginpayaan mo ng daan mo nga kabuhi. Kag may bago ka na nga kabuhi, nga dapat ikabuhi mo para sa himaya sa Diyos. In other words, baptism is not just a ritual. It marks you for the rest of your life. So much so, whenever you go through life and you face trials, you face tribulations, and you face temptations, and you are tempted to what is this, acquiesce or surrender to the temptation, you remind yourself, baptized na kaya. My baptism is important. It marks me for the rest of my life. I am a baptized believer. That is why I emphasize din natin nga, nga this is a sacrament or ordinance given by Jesus Christ Himself. Hindi, wala, hindi niya na pag-ihatag kung wala na siya sa significance kag, pag, kag important siya. So, when those things happen to you, and you are tempted to go back to your old life, you tell yourself, you remind myself, di pwede. I am baptized. I am a baptized believer. I am risen with Christ. I no longer belong to myself. I belong to God. Therefore, I should live the risen life, the new life in Christ. Baptism is a very important part of the Christian life which you carry with you for the rest of your life. Lifetime na yan. It is a symbol and it is a representation of who you are now. You are risen with Christ. Remember that. And that's why it's very important nga amuni, ang first point natin, if we are to understand what to be risen with Christ means. Then number two, the power of the Spirit. Di ba na the significance of baptism. Number two, the power of the Spirit. And here we will have to go to a passage. Nga kinanglan, basahon din natin. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. Uh, Pakibutan na lang da, liho. Basi mamangkot naman ka mo. Daw wala man di ginmensyonar ang Holy Spirit sa ginbasa ta sa Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Ang hambal lang dira na if you have been raised with Christ, ano da yung labot sa Holy Spirit? The answer is here. If you read it, okay, basta ako na lang kadali. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of calling, what are glorious riches of His inheritance among the saints. Now read this. What is the immeasurable greatness of His power to us to believe? Both silingon may power kita to live the Christian life. But take a look at verse 20. That same power which God gives us to live the Christian life is the same power which He demonstrated in the life of Christ when He rose Jesus from the dead. Grabe ni! Explosive ni! Dynamite ni! The power which God used to raise Jesus from the dead is the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? If you are a Christian, 
kung ginbaton mo si Kristo Jesus bilang imo manluluwas, the power is in you. Because as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. Do you understand the implications of that? Buts lingon, may, gu- may gahong ka sa pagbato, sa daan mo nga mga desires kagabuhi. You are not left powerless. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. What does it say? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of... If you remember, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. What does that mean in relation to the recent life? What does it mean in relation to living the new life, the Christian life, KT? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things are become new. It means you have the power. Very simply, very simple. It means hindi ka na pwede mag, maghatag sa excuse. Uh, na tamaran ako ni magbato sa akong kasalanan, kido perme lang ko perde, kaluya sa akong. That, that, that kind of defeatist thinking is no longer allowed. <laughs> does not mean that you will not stumble. It does not mean that it, it does not mean that, that you are automatically perfect. But it means you will have to fight courageously and confidently against your sins. Because you have the power. The same power that throw, that resurrected Jesus Christ. Do, do you understand? My brothers and sisters, do, I, do you understand the greatness of that power? The power that can raise Jesus from the dead is the same power that is in you. You have the power. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. So in practical application, there is, don't be defeatist. In your thinking, be strong, be confident, be courageous, fight the good fight of faith because you have the power. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Tagbalikan ta, balikan ta tong hambal ko kagina nga kung isummarize mong Colossians 3. The, the things that we are supposed to do can be summarized as follows. Ano to gani? Prioritize what is heavenly put to death what is uh, what's this what is earthly and finally put on what is lovely do you not know that by yourself you cannot do all those things but if you have the holy spirit and yes you do if you have faith in Christ you can i can do all things through Christ who strengthens me oh una isa isa unta okay what's this prioritize what is heavenly do you not know That in Romans chapter, let, let, let's go to some verses. Huh? For example, sa Romans chapter 8 verse 5. Basahon ko lang kadali. For those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit have their mind set on the things of the Spirit. Because you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is renewing your mind. Nga asang una, sang bago ka palang Kristo, sang bago ka palang nga Christian, puros kasalanan ang nagapuno sa una-una mo. Pero subong may nagabato na. May mga verses kang madumduman. Nagabago ang imong perspective. Nagabago ang imong una-una. Who is at work? The power that rose Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit. He is, he is giving you the mind of Christ. He is making you mind the things that are above. Why, why is it that you want to go to church? You want to read the Bible? You want to seek the things that are above? What is happening? The Holy Spirit, the power of the resurrection. He is helping you to prioritize what is heavenly. Oh, putting to death what is earthly. Again, by yourself, you cannot do it. But you have the power. The Holy Spirit is helping you. Kadto ka sa Romans chapter 8, verse 13. Oh, Romans 8, verse 13. Anong hambal ta? Because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Nga mabatuan mong kasalanan mo. Nga bisang tuon may struggle, may conflict, may kabudlayan. Every time you fall, you rise again. And you fight again. What is happening? It's the Holy Spirit strengthening you not to give up, but to fight. Because by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds the sinful deeds of the flesh or of the body. And finally, kadto kita sa last part sang atong passage, dira sa verses 12 down up to 17, sang Colossians chapter 3. It is, 
Oh, basta hon ko. Put on humble dira, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. Amo ni siyang ginatawag ng mga Christian virtues which we are to put on. Do you know who produces these things in your heart? Sino? The Holy Spirit. Galatians 5:22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering, etc. So, so it's once again it's the power of the resurrection. You are able to live the recent life because of the Holy Spirit. Praise God that He has provided for everything so that we can live the Christian life, the recent life, the new life in Christ. Diri ko matako. So as I said, it's short, no? Finally, we were able to accomplish a long time New Year's resolution. Second Peter, diri ko matako. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 Ara nata His divine power has given us everything we required required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness He has given us the power to live the new life in Christ. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Matakop na ko de. Pero I just like to issue a challenge. Ini siya applicable ni siya for those who are risen with Christ. Sa mga tao nga luwas. But it might be possible that you still do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. These are things you cannot do by your own strength. Sino bala ang makaban? How say ako galingon halin sa kamatayon? You cannot do that. Only God can do that. You need God. You need His grace. You need Jesus Christ. Therefore, if you want to be risen with Christ, kal kung wala mo pa siya na baton, si mo tigay pasuon bilang imo, imo manluluwas, then I urge you and challenge you, do so right now. Receive the risen Christ, the Lord Jesus, into your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you will be forgiven of your sins, you will have eternal life, and you will have the power. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you that you have, you have provided everything for us. Not only our physical and material needs, but more importantly, the power to live the Christian life, the power to live a new life in Christ, the power to live the recent life. Ginoo, hindi matungkad sa ngamon mga huna-huna ang greatness ng sininga kamaturan. Imagine, O Lord, the power which rose, which raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that dwells in us. Therefore, O Lord, help us not to be discouraged or despondent in all the trials and temptations that we face. Help us always to remember we are risen with Christ, we are baptized believers, and we have the Holy Spirit. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that is all because of your love and grace. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all the people of God say, Amen. Amen.